Whitney, I want you and your mother, Dana, to come here. This is Dana Lane. She is our uh, children's pastor. Her and her husband, Van, work here and do a wonderful job. Uh, Dana, when this revival first broke out, we saw so many of the children just being slain in the spirit. And I know your three girls were just touched so mightily. But uh, uh, can you tell me something that uh, the Lord was showing you when you were, did he say anything to you when you would see these children on the floor? Well, I just hope this will bless the people out here because um, I would sit back. I love to just sit back and, and watch people get prayed for and just see the expressions on their face when Steve comes at them. <laughs> and uh, I just love to see them. And, but I'll be honest with you, there are times that um, you just get tickled at people because you really don't know how to react because God's just doing some really strange things. And he has done some strange things to this one right here. And I kept thinking, gosh, Lord, what are you doing? And I, I've been overjoyed. There was one time, though, I got real embarrassed because I came up here to pray during altar. And Whitney was travailing. She's been travailing during the altar calls, but she was travailing so loud one night that she travailed over Steve Hill's voice, if you can believe that. And I saw Brenda get up off the platform, and I went, oh, my goodness, that's my child. Pastor's going to come to us and say, get control over your children, please. <laughs> but You know what happened when I, I heard this child just moaning and groaning or screaming, really, I didn't know what it was. And I just kept, I got up and I followed it. And I went over and there she was on her knees bowed. And at the altar call, she, after it was given, she was uh, groaning and the spirit travailing for souls, I believe. And when I saw it was her, this little girl is really spiritual. And I said, oh, it's all right. I thought a mother just wouldn't take her child out and was disturbing. <laughs> Go ahead, tell what happened. So I kept watching her and people kept coming to me and said, oh, your child just blessed me so much. And I said, thank you, thank you. And I finally said, Lord, I want to know what's going on. And we would try and ask her and we would really get on to her though and say, you know, if this is not of God, I don't want you to be doing this. So I was sitting up in the balcony and the altar call came and she started um, just doing that bowing again. And then she started doing this. And I said, Lord, what is she doing? And he said, she is snatching people out of hell. So I, I, <laughs> so I'm going to let her share with you what the Lord was telling her. Because when I asked her, I said, Whitney, what was God telling you? She said, well, he was telling me I was snatching people out of hell. So I'll let, you tell, let her tell you what he said to her. During the altar call, when um, Steve was um, telling the people to come and get saved at the altar, I started pulling my hands over my shoulder, and God told me that to take the people off the earth from hell, that they were living from hell off the earth, and put them into a stage that where they were living like Jesus on the earth, and God um, told me that if I didn't snatch them out of hell from the earth, that they would go down to hell when they died. So I obeyed God and I pulled them up, and um, when Steve asked everybody who wanted to be prayed for, Brother Dick Rubin came up in the balcony, and I said, Mom, can I go get prayed for? She said, sure, go ahead. So I went and I got prayed for by Brother Dick Rubin, and I didn't fall out like most people do, but I, I was leaning over, and I had my head toward the ground, and all I could hear in my ears was God saying, Whitney, when you get older, you're going to deliver my people. And when I was pulling my arms over my shoulder, when I put them down, I'd feel the pain that people feel in hell. And when I would pull them up, I'd feel just God running through my arms. And I would feel love and joy and peace. 
and it just felt wonderful because when I put them down, I could just feel the pain that people feel when they go to hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, he's doing a special work in the children. They say in Argentina that the children are being used mightily of the Lord over there. They said that the children, God's showing the children's sin in people's lives in the church, and the children are going up and prophesying over the people, and they're saying, there's sin in your life. You're, you've got another woman, and you're running around on your wife, and God wants you to repent. And because a child's saying it to them, they're repenting and getting saved. And it's against the law to go witness on the streets. So the children have taken to the streets, and they're going to door to door, and they're saying, are you sick? Do you have a need that I can pray with you about? And the people say, well, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm sick. And then the child can't even hardly reach their stomach, will lay their hands on their stomach, and they're falling out in the doors. God's using the children today. Hallelujah. Hey, darling, listen, can you talk? Can you talk? Straighten up just a little bit if you can, baby. How old are you? Eight. Eight years old? What would you say to other children that's here tonight? What would you say to them about the revival? To listen to God when he talks to you so you can tell people what he's saying to you. You know what the scripture says in the book of Joel? It said, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters. And he separates children from young people. He said, and your young men and my handmaidens, your young men will dream, see visions, your old men will dream dreams. So the Lord's saying that he's going to pour out his spirit on the children. That's exactly what he's doing. I want every child in this house below the age of 12 years old, I want you to come up here. I want every parent to send your child up here. We're going to pray over them. Now, look at the children. Every child. Come on. <clears throat> Wow, goodness gracious, look at this. Praise the Lord. Come on up, honey. It's okay. Yeah. Kids, I want you to look this way. Every one of you. Look this way. And you remember, Brother Steve, sharing this with you, that God has a plan for every one of your lives, okay? He's got a special plan for your life. I want you to say that out loud with me. I'm gonna, you're going to repeat right after me. God has a special plan for my life. And he, here's what I want you to understand, is that it doesn't have to start later on. Right now, God can speak to you. I was with a man recently that prayed over me that when he was eight years old, Jesus appeared to him at the edge of his bed when he was eight years old. Appeared. It was in white, pure white. And he said that it, the Spirit of the Lord came all over him. And he, he, he felt the, the power of God in his room and anointed him when he was eight years old. Right now, that man is one of the greatest healing evangelists in the world today. But it happened. The anointing came when he was eight years old. Eight. Remember that. That God has a very special plan for your life. Brother Dick Rubin's going to come and pray over you right now. And what I want you to do is I want you all to be touching one another. I want you to lay hands on one another. Any other kids that need to come up? Are there any other children? Parents, I, I want to warn you about taking lightly this revival with your children. My little girl at age four is seeing angels. 
She's seeing angels. Don't hinder your children from coming. I want to make sure you're all touching one another. You're going to be praying for one another. Brother Dick is going to lead us in a prayer. He's going to pray a prayer over you. But you remember, this revival is for you. Okay? This revival is for you. Hallelujah. Okay, everyone have each other's hand. Everyone's touching each other. Can you, can you touch one of their hands? There you go. Don't leave anyone out tonight. Amen. I believe that God is putting anointing in his people. And the scripture says that a little child shall lead them. And you humble yourself when a little child has that kind of an anointing. And Father, we do ask, give me a hold of someone's hand. Lord God, your word says that unless each of us on this earth humble ourselves as a little child, will in no way ever receive the fullness of your kingdom. And Father, tonight as these young people stand here, your little vessels, the ones, Lord God, that said, oh, what can a child do? Father, I know that a child came to this earth named Jesus one day. He changed the world. And Father, we speak that anointing now. Lord, pour it out, Lord, upon these young people, Lord. Even though they can't understand, Father, the intellect of it, Father, it's not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of that anointing. Father, pour it out. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Pour it out, Lord. Pour it out on these people. These people, Lord, caught of your kingdom. Yes, Lord, let it just flow. Let it flow. Stretch out your hands to these people. Release that anointing. All precious young children. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.